taking a position at odds with U.S. policy, Prime Minister John Diefenbaker of Canada now faces the major crisis of his career. Ousted by two no-confidence votes in Parliament, he must again stake his leadership at the polls. Canada's reluctance to arm Royal Canadian Air Force jets and the Dominion's rockets with nuclear warheads precipitated the crisis, triggered by U.S. statements which Diefenbaker resented as an intrusion into Canadian affairs. But sharing the power and the beauty of North America as they have during over a century of peace, Americans and Canadians, knowing that difficulties must arise from time to time, are not too disturbed by the nuclear fuss. Across the breadth of the continent, joint projects tell of the cooperation between states and provinces, and monuments to the long peace that has marked U.S.-Canadian relations attest to the confidence that exists between the two countries. Only recently, to improve Canada's balance of trade, Washington allowed the millions of U.S. visitors to the Dominion to increase their duty-free purchases there to $400. Even before the United States became Canada's ally in World War II, President Roosevelt, as the guest of Prime Minister Mackenzie King, during the dark days of 1940, thrilled people on both sides of the border with this ringing declaration. The Dominion of Canada is part of the sisterhood of the British Empire. I give to you assurance that the people of the United States will not stand idly by if domination of Canadian soil is threatened by any other empire. Then, when the U.S. finally entered the fray, it was inspired to surpass itself by Canada's titanic war efforts, among them the bridge of ships across the Atlantic that was a vital factor in the Allied victory in Europe. The St. Lawrence Seaway, opened by Queen Elizabeth and President Eisenhower, is another example of Canadian-U.S. peacetime cooperation, and Prime Minister Diefenbaker viewed it as evidence of the unique association between the two nations. The dew line across the top of Canada shows that the Dominion and the U.S. stand in closest defense cooperation, despite their momentary nuclear differences. In fact, as Mr. Diefenbaker has pointed out, the extent of the voluntary integrated defense setup between the U.S. and Canada would amaze the world if it were fully known. Surely history can show few examples of two sovereign nations having so much faith in one another. This recent tete-a-tete -tete between Prime Minister Diefenbaker and President Kennedy is an augury that further talks between the two could resolve the current misunderstandings. And these stirring phrases certainly suggest it. Geography has made us neighbors. History has made us friends. Economics has made us partners. And necessity has made us allies. Those whom nature has so joined together, let no man put asunder. With the 25th Canadian Parliament dissolved, 10 million Canadians will shortly vote in their second general election in a year and Diefenbaker's nuclear policy must stand or fall on that vote. Lester Pearson, Nobel Peace Prize winner opposed to Mr. Diefenbaker, hopes Canadian-American relations will not suffer during the campaign. The nuclear age brings difficulties to alliances on both sides of the Iron Curtain, but Canadian-American relations have been too cordial for too long to permit a lasting quarrel.